In this lecture, we will talk about shifts in demand curve. I told you in my last lecture that movements along a demand curve happen when there is a change in a variable that is measured on either of the two axes. Well, a demand curve shifts when there is a change in the variables that affect the quantity demanded but are not measured on either axis. While discussing law of demand and demand curve, I assume that the factors that influence the demand for a good except the price of the good remains constant. When these other factors change, the demand schedule also changes and consequently there will be a change in demand curve as well. In this lecture, I will discuss these other factors with you and I will show you how these factors affect the demand schedule and demand curve. There are many factors that influence the demand behavior. I will discuss some important ones with you. The first factor is income of consumer. But before we talk about the effect of income of a consumer on his demand behavior, let us first understand the distinction between normal goods and inferior goods. Normal goods are those goods whose demand increases with the rise in income of a consumer. On the other hand, inferior goods are those goods whose demand decreases with the rise in income of a consumer. Let me give you an example so that you could understand this better. Meet John. John has recently started working at an MNC and is quite happy with his job. And let's suppose that his monthly income is $1000. Now, because he's earning only $1000 a month, he wants to keep his transportation cost as low as possible so that he could save more. So, given this situation, he starts using public transport to go to his office every day. Say, he starts taking bus rides. Now, a quick question for you. If John gets a raise tomorrow, suppose that his salary gets doubled, then do you think he will still stick to bus rides? No, right? Maybe he will start taking cab rides then, or maybe he will then buy his own car. Not a luxury one, but maybe a cheaper one on EMI. Right, this is quite a possibility. So in this example, bus ride is an inferior good and cab ride is a normal good. As John will start taking less bus rides and more cab rides as his income increases. Before I proceed further, there are some important points that you should keep in mind. If a good is an inferior good, it does not necessarily mean that it lacks quality. Inferiority relates to affordability of a good. For example, imagine someone who cannot even afford to take bus rides. Say because he is earning only $200 a month, so he prefers to walk to his workplace and does not use public transport. Now, for this person, bus ride is a normal good because if his income increases, he will then stop walking to his workplace and start taking bus rides. And if his income rises further, then bus rides will become an inferior good for him as then he will start taking cab rides more often. And then if he starts generating some more money, then he will stop using cabs that often and will buy his own car. So now cab ride will become an inferior good and car will become a normal good. So you see how a consumer who likes a good when his income was low may not like the same good when his income is high. Also note that no good is inferior at all times and for all. For a consumer with high income, cab ride is an inferior good but at the same time cab ride is a normal good for a consumer with low income. Let us now continue our discussion on how the income of a consumer affects his demand behavior. Let's say we have a normal good, good X, and the following are demand schedule and demand curve for this good. Because good X is a normal good, when the income of a consumer increases, he will start buying more of good X even if the price of good X remains same. And this will hold true for all the prices. 
So this means the quantity demanded will increase at all the price levels and we will get a new demand schedule and a new demand curve as shown here. Note that in this case the entire relationship between price and quantity demanded has changed. So this is a case of change in demand. As the quantity demanded has increased at all the price levels with the increase in income, the demand curve for good X has shifted to the right from DD to DD new and we call it increase in demand. Similarly, if the income of a consumer decreases, the demand curve for good X will shift to the left as shown here and it is called decrease in demand. So this is how a change in income of a consumer affects his demand behavior for a normal good. Let's move to the case of inferior goods now. As discussed, in the case of an inferior good, the demand for good decreases with the rise in income. So an increase in the income of a consumer will lead to a leftward shift in the demand curve and a decrease in the income will lead to a rightward shift in the demand curve. To summarize our discussion, we can say that any change that increases the quantity demanded at every price shifts the demand curve to the right and is called an increase in demand and any change that reduces the quantity demanded at every price shifts the demand curve to the left and is called a decrease in demand. Before I proceed further, you should be clear that when we talk about movements along a demand curve due to change in price of the good, we say that there is a change in quantity demanded. On the other hand, when we talk about shifts in demand curve due to a change in factors other than the price of the good, we say that there is a change in demand. This is because when the other factors change, the entire demand curve shifts. The second factor affecting demand behavior of a consumer is price of related goods. There are two types of related goods, substitutes and complements. Substitute goods are those goods which can be substituted for each other, such as tea and coffee. So if one day your office cafeteria is out of coffee, then you can manage with tea, as both are refreshing and hot drinks. In case of such goods, increase in the price of one causes increase in demand for the other and decrease in the price of one causes decrease in the demand for the other. For example, if the price of a cup of coffee increases from $4 to $6, then this will lead to an increase in demand for tea. As the consumers will shift from the consumption of coffee to consumption of tea, as they will now find tea to be relatively cheaper. Note that there is no change in the price of tea. It is the price of coffee that has increased from $4 to $6. So in this case, the demand curve for tea will shift to the right from DD to DD new. On the other hand, if the price of coffee decreases from $4 to $2, then the demand for tea will also decrease as the consumers will now shift from the consumption of tea to consumption of coffee and consequently the demand curve for tea will shift to the left. There could be many other examples of substitute goods. For example, there are many music streaming service providers in India. Though they are not close substitutes as they all have some unique features but they are still substitutes. So if tomorrow one of the service providers increases the monthly subscription rate, then the customers might consider moving to some other service provider. Another example could be ice cream and other frozen desserts. So if the price of ice cream rises, you might consider switching to other frozen desserts or you might consider switching to some other brand of ice cream which is in your budget. So this is how price of a substitute good may affect your demand behavior. Let us now move to the second type of related goods, complementary goods. Complementary goods are those goods which are demanded together. They complete the demand for each other. For example, pen and ink, car and petrol, a DSLR camera and its lens, an iPhone and its apps, etc. 
in case of complementary goods, a fall in the price of one causes increase in the demand for other and a rise in the price of one causes decrease in the demand for the other. For example, if the price of iPhone apps rise, then the demand for iPhones may fall as the consumers might consider switching to Android devices in that case. Or say if price of DSLR lenses rise, then the demand for DSLR cameras may fall. And similarly, if the price of gasoline rises, then the demand for cars will fall. Or maybe people won't stop buying cars altogether, but they will surely switch to fuel efficient cars. So the demand for cars with low mileage will fall. So this is how price of complementary goods may affect your demand behavior. Another important factor that may cause the quantity demanded to change at all the price levels is expectations of consumers. So if consumers are expecting the price of a good to be lower in the future, then they will decrease the demand in the current period in the anticipation of getting the good at a cheaper rate in the future. For example, imagine you hear that there is going to be a sale in October in which all the e-commerce companies of fashion and electronics will offer up to 70% discount on all the products. Well, in that case, sales of these products will go down in September. Taste and preferences are also an important demand shifter. You might have noticed that as fashion changes, the demand for old fashion goods decline very sharply even if the price of those goods remains same. I remember when I was a kid, bell bottoms were quite popular and I don't remember if I have seen anyone wearing bell bottoms in the last few years. Even if you could find one in some store, you will be less likely to buy it as they are not in fashion now. Another example could be climate. What happens to your demand for ice cream in summers? It increases, right? even at the same price. There could be many other factors that may influence the taste and preferences of a consumer. For example, advertisements, new inventions, etc. In addition to the preceding factors, market demand depends on the number of buyers as well. For example, if you have a cafe in Delhi University area, then you will have more demand and thus higher sales during the semester time. While in summers, say in June and July, when the colleges are closed, then the demand for your product will decrease because then the number of buyers in that area will be less. You may also think of this at the state or country level. Think about population demographics. Imagine a state or a country with increasing birth rate. In that case, we can expect an increase in the demand for baby products in this state or country. With this, we are done with the five main factors that leads to shifts in demand curve. Now, let's have a look at the flow chart summarizing movements and shifts in demand curve. Movement along a demand curve leads to change in quantity demanded. When there is an increase in quantity demanded due to decrease in own price of the commodity, we call it extension of demand. And when there is a decrease in quantity demanded due to increase in own price of the commodity, we call it contraction of demand. On the other hand, shifts in demand curve leads to changes in demand. It could be either decrease in demand in which the demand curve shifts to the left or increase in demand in which the demand curve shifts to the right. These are caused by change in factors other than own price of the commodity. So this is all for this lecture.